Hello everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can have a punishment log command that will allow you to see all the punishments one of your staff members have done by running a command against their name. Now in a previous video, I have covered how to create a punishment log channel and that's going to essentially log all of the punishments inside of a channel but maybe that channel might get a little hectic, you don't want to have to search through it and so you might want to have a command where you can simply say like exclamation point pass punishments and then tag the user and then you're going to see all the punishments that that user has actually sent so we're going to get started i'm inside this basic project here a link to this project will be in the video description and we see our commands folder we see we have a specific command base right here this is going to allow us to create commands in a certain way and keep in mind that this project is a little messy we are going to be refactoring it and greatly improving it within the next few videos but for now, I'm just going to simply create a new folder. This will be called moderation. And within this, I'm going to make another file. This will be called punishment-logs.js. I'm going to export a new file. So module.exports. We can say our commands can be punishment logs or punish logs, something like that. Our minimum arguments will be one and our maximum arguments will be one. And our expected arguments is going to be target users at. Oops, we need a comma here. The permission for this is going to be for administrators only. Of course, you can change this permission node to whatever you want. And then afterwards, we're going to have our callback, which will have our message and our arguments. Now we're going to have to actually load this information from a MongoDB database. So we actually have to store that information into our MongoDB database at some point. So I'm going to go into my schemas folder and I'm going to make a new file. This will be called punishment-log-schema.js. Inside, I'm going to import mongoose. So constant mongoose equals require mongoose. And then I'm going to create a new schema. So constant punishment log schema equals mongoose.schema. Inside, I'm going to say the guild ID will be a string. And actually, a number of these things are going to be required strings. So if you've been following this series, you know that I frequently create a separate object called required string. And then I'm going to set my information in here. For example, type a string required is true. And then down inside of our actual schema, I can say guild ID is my required string. I can then say the user ID is another required string. The command will be required string. And now I could save a specific timestamp. However, Mongoose allows us to pass in a second object inside of our schemas. And then we could just simply say timestamps is true. This will automatically include a timestamp whenever this object or document rather is created or updated. And so if you go to update this at a different time, then the updated at timestamp will be automatically updated for us. And so this will just simply save us some time. Now we're going to export this. So module.exports equals mongoose.model. And then here's our collection name. So we can say punishment-logs. And then here's our actual schema, which is punishment log schema. Now I can save this file. But now we actually have to insert this information somewhere. So I have a couple different commands here. I have my mute command. At some point, I have a kick and ban command. However, I do have a warn command that uses the new command system. So I'm going to go into my warn command and I'm just going to use this one as an example. So scrolling down, you want to get to the point in your code where it's actually going to warn them. And so here we see that we have this return here. We're making sure that we're actually specifying someone to warn. And if you want to know more information about the warning system, a link to the video that I wrote this in will be in the video description. But essentially what we want to do here is we do not want to have our logic to say this to the database up here. We would rather have it after this if statement because we know that the command is going to actually correctly run. Now we do see we're connecting to Mongo here and so we can use this same Mongo connection. So within this try block here afterwards, I can say wait, and then here we're going to actually use our schema and save a new document. However, we need to actually import the schema. So I can say constant punishment log schema equals require. We're gonna go back a couple directories, go into schemas, and then go into punishment log schema. Now scrolling down, I can say await new punishment log schema. We're gonna have our object. 
and then afterwards we're going to use dot save. This is the standard syntax for actually inserting information into MongoDB. So inside we have to specify some information. If we look in here, we have our guild ID, our user ID, and our command. So going back, we can pass in our guild ID. We see that we already have an object for it, which is declared up here, and our user ID. So we can now go back in here. We can say guild ID and user ID. Now the command, which is the other piece of information we need, is going to be what the user actually sent. If we're using the same exact command-based system that I've been using within my videos, then this runs into a problem because we can't just access arguments, which is an array, because we're actually doing some manipulation on that array. And also we can't just access the text if you're familiar with that property. That's because that's not going to include the actual command. However, we have access to the message, and so we can't just do message.content. So scrolling down, command can be message.content, which is going to be the exact string that the user actually ran. I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back and I'm going to save this. And we're going to write our logic in here soon. But inside of my console, I'm going to run the bot with node index.js. Now going into Discord, I can actually try the warn command. So exclamation point warn at tutorial. We can say testing. Now we've done that. We can go into MongoDB. We see our warnings collection. If I click on find, let me zoom in real quick. So here we see an actual warning. And so this is the warning that we actually have that I just ran. But we also see this punishment log collection. If I click on that, we're then going to see some objects here. One of them for, is for testing. One of them is for what I just ran. But we see our created at and our updated at timestamps. These are automatically inserted in for us. Obviously, we didn't actually insert those in whenever we're calling the query right here. And so that's because the second object right here for options, we specified timestamps as true. And so Mongoose will handle that for us. But now we have a guild ID and a user ID. So now we need to actually gain access to these within our actual punishment logs command. To start things off, I'm going to import Mongo. So const Mongo equals require. We're going to go back a couple directories and access our Mongo file. We're also going to import our punishment log schema file. So we're also going to go back a couple of directories into our schemas, and then we're going to access our punishment log schema. Now that we have that, I'm going to make this function asynchronous. And then within this, we need to make sure that we have the valid target. So within our warn command, we see that we are getting the actual mentions, and we are complaining to the user if they don't tag someone. So we're going to do a similar concept here. So we could say const target equals message mentions dot users dot first and then we can say if not target then we can complain so message dot reply please specify someone to tag oops not to tag as please specify someone to load punishments for and then we can return now after this we have access to the actual guild as well as the actual user based off of this so I can say const ID and guild equals target. And so here we can connect to Mongo. So await Mongo. This returns a promise. So dot then we're going to have an asynchronous callback with Mongoose. And then within this, I'm going to use a try finally. Within the finally, I'm going to say mongoose.connection.close. If you've been following the series, you understand what's going on here. And then within the try, we're going to actually fetch this information. So I can say const result equals await a punishment log schema dot find. And we're using dot find, which is going to return all documents that match our query. And our query is going to be the guild ID being guild ID and the user ID being ID. So for now, we can just console log the actual results. And then if I save this file, I can go back into my console and I can restart the bot. Okay, so now I'm going to go into here. I'm going to use exclamation point punish logs at Alexander Flores. Okay, so we get an exception here, cannot read property ID of undefined. So perhaps the guild isn't part of this actual target. I'm not exactly sure. So we're just going to deconstruct the guild from the message, which I know is actually there. Now, if I save that and I reset the bot, I can then run exclamation point punish logs at Alexander Flores. 
and we see this information right here. So we see this array with two documents inside of it. And now at this point, I want to actually send these into the channel. So for that, I'm going to create a variable called let reply. It's going to be a string. Of course, you can use an embed here, but I'll leave that for your own implementation. A link to embeds will be in the video description. For now, I'm just going to use a very simple string just to demonstrate this functionality. Now I can loop through all of the results. So const, we can actually rename this to results. And then we can say for const result of results. And then inside, we're going to concatenate some information here. We're going to start off with a string that might say previous punishments. And then we can say reply is plus equal to some other string. But real quick, I forgot we need to add a couple new lines with a forward slash n. This will add a new line into our text. And now the reply is going to be, let's say that we want to pass in result.command was ran at, and then we want the results.created at. So now after that, I'm going to the say message.reply with reply. So if I save this and I restart the bot, I can then go in and I can run punish logs at Alexander Flores. We then see this string right here. So previous punishments, we see warn at tutorial testing was ran Saturday, August, and then we got this information here. However, we see that this is on one line. So to fix that, whenever we're creating our string here, we have to add a couple of new lines. You can add one or two or however many you want. And if I were to run this again, I would then run at punish logs at Alexander Flores. And here we see a much more readable format. Now we can do something with the actual uh, timestamp here. So going back, I'm going to highlight this entire thing and I'm going to cut it out with control X. I'm going to say new date. I'm going to pass it in as parameters. I could say dot two local date string. There's also a couple other options to local string to local time string, things like that. You can mess around with the different ones. They do different things. But for now, I'm just going to show you an example with two local date string. Okay, I forgot to actually call a function. So that's important. So make sure the call it function and then let's retype the bot again. And then I will run the same command. All right, so now we get an actual date right here. And you can mess around with the different uh, formatting functions there is. So we have two local date string, we can say two time string, two UCT string. There's a couple of different ones. I'll show you one more example, I suppose. So if I retype the bot one more time, if I run the same command. So this is going to be useful if you want a simple command that is going to log all the punishments that a staff member did. Now, of course, I just did this for a warn command. If you had a ban, a kick, a mute, any type of punishment commands that you want to log, you would then have to go into there and actually save this information. And that is it for this video. This is how you're going to actually create a punishment logging system. Thanks for watching this Discord JS tutorial. If you want to learn more about Discord JS, consider clicking on the playlist you see on your screen now. If you need help, feel free to leave a comment or ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description.